Please be seated. Good evening. My name is Deacon Tom Deal, and along with Deacon Ed Bevan, we will be serving this evening at this vigil for Chief Master Sergeant Jim McCoy. I will tell you that the honor that I have right now is beyond words, because I got to know Jim and Kathy over these last few years as I served communion to them at their home and spent a lot of very personal time with them, not only bringing Christ into their home, but just listening to the stories, listening to them talk about their family like no other thing they could speak about. Clearly, they had their priorities in order. 
They loved God with every bit of their heart and soul. And they knew that their family was their greatest gift ever given to them on this earth. And when it came time for them to bid farewell to their son, there too did they combine faith and family. So all of you who haven't noticed, we have six stained glass windows in this church. One of them is at that corner over there. In fact, this evening we will celebrate and close this evening with a prayer to St. Michael. That's correct, it is St. Michael over here because it really combines who he was. He was a father, he was a child of God, and he understood that to combine those is the way we must live our lives each and every day. All too often in our society, we separate those. But we must always remember in everything that we do that God is our constant companion and Christ is our brother in arms. Let us never forget that because then I can assure you that Miss Kathy and Chief Jim never forgot that. And so when they had to suffer the loss of their son, that's how they memorialized him in one way, is to give us the stained glass of St. Michael, truly the warrior saint. And so today, let us begin, as we must do always, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some years ago, a poet named Linda Ellis wrote a poem, having gone to a funeral. And there were a few words that she spoke about and I think it's very relevant as we prepare to celebrate the life of Chief Master Sergeant Jim McCoy. And from that poem came these words. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live in love and how we spend our dash. Because if you think about it, on most tombstones, you have the date of birth and the date of death and everything that we've done in between is represented by a dash. I can tell you this, that Chief Master Sergeant Jim McCoy, his dash would not fit on the face of the earth. Because every day of his life he served in uniform and out of uniform for the greater good of others. And even after his service was over, like so many of us, when we took the blue off, the service didn't discontinue. It just moved in a little bit different direction. And in his service, he was dedicated every day of his life to taking care of the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation. That was truly Chief Master Sergeant Jim McCoy. I ask you to look at a picture in, in the narthex where it shows a statuette made in his image. And the reason they developed that and named the school after him right here at Offutt Air Force Base is because of his dedication to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. But this evening is really about bringing forth voices from people outside of just this church and this parish. It is about bringing voices of people who knew him so well, especially his family. So this evening, we will go through some opening prayers. You will hear some readings from scripture. We will then invite those people up to speak, to share those memories, those joys, those delights, some humor in the midst of all we do this evening. We will also do a rosary. And for those of you who don't understand what that is, I'll explain it before we begin. And the family chose the glorious mysteries, the glorious mysteries. The glory of God is very much involved in those five decades. And then we will have some closing prayers and then end with the prayer of St. Michael. So let us begin. May the God of hope give you the fullness of peace and may the Lord of life be always with you and with your spirit. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection, which knit us as one throughout our lives, do not unravel with death. 
confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray asking God to gather Jim to himself. Lord our God, the death of our brother Jim recalls our human condition and the brevity of our lives on earth. But for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor does it destroy the bonds that you forge in our lives. We share the faith of your son's disciples and the hope of the children of God. Bring the light of Christ's resurrection to this time of testing and pain as we pray for Jim and for those who love him. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The first reading is a reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with, you, with hands, eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go to him, to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little one the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples, gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. But be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for in an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. If you turn to hymn number 324, we will sing two verses of I Receive the Living God. Two verses, three, two, four. Our first speaker this evening is Alan Branco, and he will come to us to represent the family first. This is Chief Jim McCoy's grandson. James McCoy is known by many names. Jim, Dad, Airman, Chief. But to me, he is Gramps. I have so many wonderful memories of Gramps. Visits on Robin Drive, on Birchwood Drive in the Grand Lodge. Exploring the acreage and the wonderful family events that Grams and Gramps hosted for all of us. Us grandkids were always in a race to beat him to the punchline of his signature witty farewell. 
I always hoped I could say, first, Gramps, I'm glad you had a chance to see me today. Gramps, with Grandma by his side, directly impacted eight kids, 20 grandkids, and all of our families. I'm so very glad that I am his grandson. And there's another family I share in common with him, and that's the Air Force. I remember the day I told him I had joined the Air Force. He had tears in the corners of his eyes. I knew he was so proud. But I'm only one of tens of thousands of airmen impacted by him. The connections he has to airmen, even 40 years after he retired, are amazing. I talked with two senior NCOs just recently. The first is Chief Mass Sergeant Cassie Nevins. She received her McCoy Academic Award at the Senior Non-Commissioned Officer Academy, and she received it from Gramps. And Chief Chris Campbell received his graduation certificate at Offutt's McCoy Airman Leadership School, and he received it from Gramps. And I got to command squadrons with Chief Nevins and Chief Campbell on my command team. The connections are real. As airmen, we learn the Airmen's Creed, which helps define how airmen are different from the citizens we defend. And one passage of that creed says, I am faithful to a proud heritage, a tradition of honor. Every time I say our Airmen's Creed, I think about my brothers, I think about my dad, and I think about Chief McCoy. And I think we're all doing right by Gramps. We called him dad, granddad, airman, chief, husband. He was an amazing man. Now I'd like to introduce a leader who serves daily to maintain our proud, our proud heritage, and that's Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Number 19 Bass. Chief, I'd like to invite you to reflect on Gramps. Thank you, Colonel Branco. Um, for those of you all who may have noticed or may not have noticed, the beautiful McCoy family is all dressed in aloha wear or shirts from Hawaii. And I think it's pretty fitting as my home of record is from Hawaii. So to everybody here and everybody online, I say to you, aloha. And so if I can just share a quick story, um, really quick. Um, I will tell you, when I first took um, the position of being the 19th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, I made it a point to reach out to the former Chief Master Sergeants of the Air Force to talk with them and get their guidance and get their counsel. Um, and I did the very same for Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force number six. And so I first met um, Chief Master of the Air Force number six on the telephone. And so I made it a point that I would reach out to him every month and call him just to check on him. And I learned that, um, you know, for the first three months I had to keep reintroducing myself um, and also making sure that Miss Kathy knew who, that, who I was, this strange woman calling um, to talk with her husband, number six. And um, as I would keep introducing myself, finally on month four, we were leaving the Pentagon and I asked my exec at the time while we were driving away from the Pentagon, let's call number six and put him on speakerphone. And we had a wonderful conversation on the telephone. And then, you know, I asked him, I was sharing with him what we were doing in the Air Force. I was um, asking him about the family. And then there was a long, awkward pause. And I asked him, um, are you still there? And in proper fashion, he actually said to me, I'm still here, I'm just trying to figure out who the heck I'm talking to. <laughs> and so, from which I responded, it's me, Joe Bass, number 19. And then every time I told him it was number 19, he got it. So, um, I sure do miss our talks that we've had. Um, and as many have said already, I'm sure that every single person in this room and those watching from home have always felt 
a special connection with SIMSAF number six. He dedicated his life to service, service to his nation, service to our Air Force, and most importantly, service to our airmen and their families. And it's not lost on me that had SIMSAF McCoy taken the path of priesthood, I likely wouldn't be standing here before you today. And today, and also the Air Force would have missed out on an incredible airman and a generational leader. Fortunately, he was already looking into the Air Force and he joined. James M. McCoy joined the Air Force in January 1951 during the Korean War. And at a time when the Air Force was fairly young, in fact, his first rank was private. Miss Kathy, I was told that your wedding invitation actually had Corporal James McCoy. Um, and he also had to get approval to get married uh, because he was only an E3. So I'm actually really proud to say that in today's Air Force, you do not have to get approval to get married anymore as an E3. Corporal McCoy started out as a radar operator and on April 1952 became Airman Second Class and his journey as an American Airman began. Airman Second Class McCoy was promoted quickly and by 1956 he was a technical sergeant. The Korean War had ended and Technical Sergeant McCoy retrained and became a military training instructor where his journey and his passion of developing airmen and shaping the future of our Air Force began. He then served some time in the Philippines where during the Taiwan crisis of August 1958, he was instrumental in establishing and operating the wing command post there which coordinated all inbound combined airstrike force aircraft. That duty was followed by an assignment to be an assistant commandant at the University of Notre Dame in 1959. And then after developing our young officers, Tech Sergeant McCoy was chosen as the Commandant of Strategic Air Commands, SAC, Non-Commissioned Officer Preparatory School at Bunker Hill Air Force Base in Indiana. He was promoted to Master Sergeant in December 1961. From July 1962 to April 1966, he was an instructor and a sergeant major for the second Air Force's NCO Academy at Barksdale. And in the middle of his tenure, he was promoted to Senior Master Sergeant. Senior Master Sergeant McCoy returned to the training career field and became the chief of the training branch for Headquarters Second Air Force. And in July 1967, he came here to Offutt Air Force Base as the NCOIC of Professional Military Education for SAC. And during this assignment, he was responsible for the reestablishment of the SAC NCO Academy at Barksdale and was promoted to Chief Master Sergeant in August 1968. Chief McCoy's story, Air Force story at least, could have ended here. He almost chose to retire in lieu of accepting his assignment to the 41st Aerospace Rescue and Recovery Wing in 1970, but then he found out it was in Hickam, Hawaii. <laughs> However, he chose to stay in, and that was where Chief McCoy got his first taste of being a senior enlisted advisor when he served as a senior enlisted advisor to the wing commander. Chief McCoy returned to the personnel training field in April, 1990, April 1973, where he became the Chief of Military Training Branch for PACAF. And in 1974, he was selected as one of the Air Force's 12 Outstanding Airmen of the Year. Chief McCoy also became SAC's first Senior Enlisted Advisor in March 1975, and in 1979, General Lou Allen Jr. selected Chief McCoy as the sixth Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. And he and Miss Kathy served in this position until retirement in November 1981. Throughout his career, Chief McCoy worked on enlisted PME issues. He believed it was important for future NCOs begin PME early in their career. As a result, the Air Force reorganized PME and created the Airman Leadership School construct that directly still impacts airmen of today. 
Even post-retirement, SimSAF number six never stopped taking care of airmen. He was active in many professional Air Force or associations to include the Board of Directors of our Air Force Association, the Airmen Memorial Foundation, a member of the Air Force Sergeants Association, and many, many more. Even this past December, being honored and recognized for the AFA Lifetime Achievement Award. It is no surprise to any of us. Chief Master in the Air Force Number no. 6 wore the uniform for over 30 years, but his impact extends to our airmen still serving today. Our airmen and our Air Force are no doubt a bet better because of him and also because of Miss Kathy. While Number no. 6 didn't end up in priesthood, he did and he was a fisher of men, and he spent his life doing God's work. I am humbled, I am honored and grateful to have known him, to call him friend. I will cherish the time that I had with him here on earth, and until we meet again, number six, don't forget it's me, Joe Bass, number 19. <laughs> and so with that, it is an honor for me to be able to bring up um, a fellow wingman of mine who just today, it seems like bookends almost, just today we were at Lackland Air Force Base where we got the chance to witness 660 um, uh, sons and daughters of, of America's moms and dads join and become United States Airmen. And so to experience the birth of these airmen and now to come here and honor SimSAF number six, there's nobody better than my wingman, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force number five. It's the old guy. Uh, I, I think I just off the top of my head, I became known for a phrase. When uh, 1970, I took kids out of high school to go to Germany. And uh, my daughter Elaine said, do I have to go? And I said, what is your last name? And she said, Gaylor. I said, get in the car. <laughs> and I think that's probably what Jim said. Uh, to his family when he went to Hawaii. What is your last name, McCoy? Get in the, get in the car. I uh, stand here with mixed emotion. Mixed emotion was defined as watching your mother-in-law drive over a cliff in your new BMW. <laughs> my mixed emotion is the sadness I feel at the loss of my very dear friend and at the same time, the uplifting that I received in the many years that I spent serving with, once again, my dear friend. We became like brothers, and so I share my mixed emotion that I know many of you feel. On 8 May 1930, I was born in Bellevue, Iowa, on the uh, Mississippi River. It's 284 miles from Creston, Iowa, where Jim McCoy was born on 30 July 1930. He always liked to boast that I was a lot older than he was <laughs> uh, by about uh, two plus months. 35 years later, our great Air Force brought the two of us together at Barksdale Air Force Base when I attended the second Air Force NCO Academy. I was assigned as a student to sea flight, and uh, I had 60 hours of instruction on a block called HRM, Human Relations and Management. And the instructor happened to be Senior Master Sergeant Jim McCoy. And we sat alphabetically. And so I sat Gaylor right in front of his podium. 
uh, he was five or six feet away. But if I had any doubt as to why I was attending, it became obvious after listening to Senior Mass Sergeant McCoy instruct. He was brilliant, and I immediately knew why I was there. He shared with the flight techniques of leadership and management that I had never heard. He introduced me, if you can imagine, Abraham Maslow and his hierarchy of needs and, and many other behavioral techniques that assisted me in my future Air Force career. He was so good. And I took uh, notes and of an evening in the dormitory where all of the students lived, uh, because I had good notes, I would become somewhat of an instructor for those that were struggling a bit in some of the subjects. So uh, Jim McCoy and I came together in the spring of 1965, and it was the beginning of a 57-year friendship. My mother, uh, who was a brilliant lady, I think the McCoy kids will agree, moms uh, become more and more intelligent as the years go by. And we all quote things our mom said. My mom said famous things like, if you're hungry, you'll eat. Uh, I thought that was brilliant. But the one that, uh, the one that I like, listen to what my mom said. You only tease people you like. You only tease people you like. That's true. If you don't like someone, you stay away from them. But if you like someone, uh, you enjoy teasing. Uh, fortunately, Jim and I were both great teasers, and we were both good at taking a tease. Some people are good at giving it, but we were both experts at receiving a tease. But I got the ultimate tease on Jim McCoy at the Senior Academy at Gunner. Uh, student question, who was the biggest influence in your career in life? And Jim said, I'd like to start uh, first with that. No doubt in my mind, my wife, Kathy. Uh, she was my inspiration, my guidance, my critic, my friend. Uh, she was there for me. And uh, he, uh, he loved you so much, Kathy, and, and had the greatest affection for you. And he expressed that that day. And when he finished, the student said, what about you, Chief Gaylor? And I said, oh, no doubt in my mind, Kathy McCoy. <laughs> the look he gave me was priceless. You could not raise enough. The look he gave me. And, and then when the students responded with a bit of laughter, Jim laughed and accepted the tease. That was the kind of uh, uh, man that he was. He was just a great man. And I had such love for him and, and we enjoyed our time together. And another thing Jim would always say, and I know uh, Chief Finch and Chief Murray heard Jim say this, do you have any idea what it's like to follow Bob Gaylor? I followed Bob Gaylor all my life. Uh, but you remember the Smothers Brothers show, Dickie and Tommy Smothers? And Tommy would always say to Dick, Mom always loved you better. Mom always loved you better. Well, I can say to Jim McCoy, God loved you better because now he took you first. He accepted you into his arms, into his loving arms. He is now there with you, and, and uh, you are now at peace and at rest. And I applaud that, because there is no way you could not like Jim McCoy. He was a gentleman, a father, a husband, a grandfather, a patriot, an airman, a citizen, uh, and uh, not only a gentleman, but a gentle man. 57 years I was privileged to tease and joke and spend time with Jim and Kathy McCoy. So I've lost a dear friend, as many of you have, and the family, of course, have lost a husband and a father and a grandfather and a great-grandfather. We've got memories. My gosh, do we have memories. 
of events that we shared together, of times that we spent, of the trials and challenges that we faced together, and, and we look back uh, with great glory and remembering uh, James Mark McCoy from Creston, Iowa. God bless the McCoy family, Kathy. I have great love for you and the family. I had a chance to talk with uh, Jim's kids. And like my uh, three, Kenny was here somewhere. Uh, they are the greatest. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you. So many times I, in my career as a senior officer, I knew better than to not follow the senior NCOs. <laughs> because oftentimes they led us where we didn't know we wanted to go. And once we got there, we realized that they led us to the right place. And any senior officer knows that you are a better officer because you listen to your NCOs, and especially your senior NCOs. And I can't be honored more than to be here with Chief and his family and two Chief Master Sergeants of the Air Force. There is no better way to celebrate your life as an officer than to put yourself in their company, because if you want to get it right, you follow their lead. With that said, and I don't know how you're going to follow this, but we now open the floor and invite you to the podium, to this AMBO, to reflect on your own. If you have any comments, this is your time to get up to speak and to share your moments memories and thoughts of Chief Jim McCoy. So please, come forward. See, I told you it was hard to follow, <laughs> and you all felt the same way. But we are not done yet. We still have another family reflection, and it's my honor to invite up at this point um, Jim and Louise McCoy to share some memories, thoughts, and reflections of their father, their father-in-law, father-in-law, and the McCoy family. What an act to follow. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, Chief Bass, Chief Gaylor, um, Alan, wonderful speeches. We are, Louise and I are just um, privileged to be here. And I want to start by saying, uh, Chief Bass brought up the word aloha. Uh, in many of our recent conversations, long distance because of COVID, um, my, Louise and I would talk to mom and dad, and the first word out of his mouth was aloha. So he had it in his heart, that spirit, and, um, and I'll forever cherish that. Um, you know, dad was uh, obviously a, a great airman, a leader, uh, exhibited by today the wonderful color guard, the, uh, the great presence of the United States Air Force, which he loved. And he loved not just the service, but he loved his family. And he loved his grandkids. And I just want to give a special shout out to the 20 grandchildren here. All 20 of them are here. I think they should get a round of applause. Uh, before I amble on too long, I do want to share with you uh, um, just some uh, uh, stories that stuck out to me. When I was very young, and dad had taken up the very exasperating game of golf. 
um, he once asked me, hey, Jimmy, you want to go caddy for me? And I go, what's a caddy? And he goes, well, you carry my clubs around and do what I say. Okay. <laughs> and catch the ball. And uh, so I, uh, I said, sure. I knew nothing about golf. And he had just started his golfing, which became to be a, uh, uh, he really loved golf uh, for many, many years. Anyhow, I was, I was uh, caddying for him, and I was uh, chasing his balls down, and I was looking here and there for a ball in the uh, brush and looking out for a snake because I think it was in Louisiana. And anyhow, uh, we got at the end of the game, and we're all in the uh, what they call the 19th hole, and they were all, the men were all having a brew or two, and I was sitting there going, hey, Dad, you won. And I go, what are you talking about? I played terrible. And he goes, no, you got the highest score. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's just... Uh, one of my very early childhood memories, and, um, and I really, really wanted to uh, tell you that, uh, my gosh, we're going to miss him, but, uh, but he did. He, he's, just, he's just a one of a kind, and, um, and he has, uh, and uh, as the other speaker said, he had a great sense of humor, and I'm going to lean into my beautiful wife here, Louise, for a little story that she'll tell you. Aloha. <laughs> we all love Dad for enriching our lives and also for his unwavering support. He also had a very keen sense of humor, which we got to know and embrace and love. And one of the earliest times I witnessed, experienced that sense of humor was when I got to go home with my significant other. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> to the Midwest for a family event in Wichita, Kansas. And it was a wonderful family wedding reunion. And then after all the festivities, we climbed in with a slight hangover, of course. After all, we're McCoys. So we... <laughs> Climbed into the back seat of mom and dad's Oldsmobile, right? Was, or oh, Ford, well, Ford. Was a big, comfortable car. Next day, we weren't driving drunk. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> we're in the back seat. Anyway, we're driving, and thankfully, dad was driving us home to Omaha, so we got to sneak us sleep and rest in the back seat. I would doze off, wake up, I'd see cornfields, 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 wake up cornfields, cornfields, cornfields. Finally came to lunchtime and we stopped at a rest stop. We we'll walk in and we're starving and we walk into a McDonald's and this is 1986. There was this movie that really bombed called Shanghai Surprise with Madonna and Sean Penn, but they were doing a deal, promotional deal with McDonald's. So we walk in and everywhere in this small McDonald's had these rice paddy hats. And all the employees were wearing those little rice paddy hats. Of course, they see me and they're like, very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but dad, without missing a beat, walks up right next to me, puts his arm around my shoulder and said, we did this just for you. <laughs> I just burst out laughing, and, and, and it was that moment, and many moments I know we all have experienced with him and shared with him. It's those type of memories that we will carry with us forever because he is with us forever. And we love you, Dad. We will never forget you. Thank you. At this point in individual service, we turn to uh, the rosary. And for those of you who are not Catholic and not familiar with this practice, we love, uh, we adore Mary in the Catholic Church, and many people, I think, misunderstand what that truly means. And what that simply means is this. In most of what you've heard, 
when there were difficult times and they even asked Chief McCoy, who is your inspiration, who did you turn to? And he always spoke of his mother, but he also spoke of Kathy, because she was the mother of his children and the grandmother of his grandchildren. And we too turned to our mother in the most difficult of times, because in the most gentle way, in the most gentle voice, in the most gentle touch, Mary will always say to us, turn to him and he will comfort you. Go to him and he will care for you. Embrace him and he will always love you. And so that's why we pray the rosary so that we never forget that our focus is on Christ and he will always bring us to a sense of peace, a sense of hope, and a sense of healing. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The family asked that we do the glorious mysteries. The first glorious mystery, the resurrection. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man, and they were amazed. And he said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, the second glorious mystery, the ascension. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, The third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit. There appeared to them tongues as fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us for our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in The fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption. My beloved speaks to me. Arise, my love, my dove, my fair one, and come away, for behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, the fifth glorious mystery, the crowning of Mary. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown, of twelve stars. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To Thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To Thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, Thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Jim into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One. You are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Jim his sins and grant him a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant upon him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord, which is beyond all understanding, in the knowledge of love of God and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And as I mentioned earlier, when they lost their son Michael, the only way they knew how to, how to celebrate that death, how to celebrate the fact that he was going home to heaven, through the grief and the pain of that loss, they drew closer to their God, they drew closer to Christ, and they represented who he was. He was a, a minister of God. He was a son of Christ. And they represented that here in our church with the image of St. Michael. And so to conclude today's vigil service, we pray the prayer of St. Michael. You see the words up on the screens. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
promise the words are on the screen for our closing hymn. If you please rise, Lord, guard and guide the men who fly. We will sing all four verses.